I'm delighted to say we're about to talk to Kirsty Allsop, a TV presenter, of course, who has been at the centre of possibly one of the most bizarre controversies uh, that I've seen in modern times. You know, we talk about how the world has gone completely stark, staring, bonkers mad. Uh, this, you might remember, was all over the papers for the last few days uh, because her son Oscar went on uh, an interrail holiday with a friend over the course of uh, the summer, all over Europe, you know, travelling by train, uh, staying in presumably hostels, you know, uh, because he was 15, um, a lot of people got piled onto her because she said she was happy to have him home. And it was so irresponsible for him to be allowed to go on his own. Absolutely incredible stuff. And so as a result, she's been sort of the subject of a Twitter pylon, not not least of it of it being being from just so many people with nothing better to do. Kirsty, very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us. I mean, this has been, I think, one of the great illustrations of what's wrong with this country, um, you know, and why people are either um, more interested in other people's lives because they can see what they're doing on social media um, or just, you know, they want to tell you how you should live your life, which is none of their business really, is it? Well, actually, it is their business in the sense that I tweeted about it, so yeah. I put it out there. The reason I did that is because I'm very interested in the recent research which says that some of the anxiety that young people are suffering is due to a lack of trust that we become increasingly risk averse, that we think the world is a more dangerous place, which it isn't, and that as a result, we are holding our children back and that this isn't very good for them. Now, obviously, I wasn't telling anyone else how to live their life or parent their children, but I thought that Oscar's tale was quite inspiring and yeah. kind of uplifting. He's only 15 because he's born on the 21st of August, mm. and therefore, as you know, he's in the, the cohort that um, has just finished their GCSEs, the huge majority of whom are already 16. Right. So obviously there was no way I was going to say to him, no, mate, you can't go on the trip with your friend right. and that a lot of your other friends are doing because you happen to be born in August. Yes. So the 15 thing is a bit of a sort of, you know, if we're happy for children to start school when they're just four because they're born in June or July or August, then we must yeah. be happy for them to do things at the other end Sure. Well, June, I mean, and also, I mean, the, f the fact is that, um, you know, it used to be that you could leave school at 16 or sometimes 15, you know, if, if you were in that GCSE year and in the yeah. old days you could leave school literally at the age of 15 if your birthday was in July or August and yeah. then go to work. Yeah, my other half did. Also, yeah. dad did. Right. I mean, Oscar's grandfather left school and joined the Arctic convoys in 1944 at the end of the war. Mm. So, you know, he, he he's always obviously known that people did things at that age and he's confident he's never been in any trouble i trust him he's traveled quite widely he's an independent young man youngest of four boys so i was like yeah you, but you see i think this is less about what people believe is the right thing to do and more about twitter and more about social media, which I fear is now becoming more and more intrusive in everybody's life. And you're right, I mean, no, you did put it out there, but I was saying to my producer, Christian, this morning, for me, Twitter is a place where if you say something like, I just bought some really nice apples, somebody will say, are you saying you hate oranges? You know, because that's how, yeah, kind of how the world works now. No, I think you're right. There is that element to Twitter. But I think this debate has gone much, much wider. It's come out of Twitter now. It's, as you say, been on the, the newspapers and various radio talk shows and shows like yours. Mm. And you and, and people are talking about this. And I think it is an important thing to talk about because, as you say, we look back in the past, we see that young people of 15, 16, 17 were given huge amounts of responsibility and a lot of control over their own lives. And our children aren't being given that. And we have a national crisis of confidence and anxiety among teens. Is there a relationship between those two things? I think there absolutely is, and you're, you're quite right. But it's about parenting, and but that comes back to the other part of, of, of this, which is that, you know, if you're, uh, you know, Oscar's mother, which you are, surely you are entitled to know what's best for him, and, and you probably do know what's best for him. I think that I trust him. He, he put together the plan, it was his money that he'd saved up, Christmas money, birthday money over mm. the years. You know, he was going with a young man that I know very well and like a great deal. And, and who you also um, presumably had to trust a little bit as well. Yes, absolutely, yes. And um, I didn't... It was something that a lot of my friends did when I was a kid. You know, we all got holiday jobs. Mm. We all saved up. 
and we really wanted to travel. You know, we went around countries that no longer exist and, uh, um, you know, communist bloc countries. It was before um, Yugoslavia right. broke up. Also, you know, the world was a, a different place. And now people say to me on Twitter, obviously, because that's the mode of communication I was doing originally, oh, the world is a more dangerous place. I'd never let my child do that now. No, 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 you don't understand. The world isn't what it was. And actually, because of modern communication, mobile telephones, yeah. much better emergency health, yeah. and safe for transport, safe for cars, trains, planes, the world for a teen travelling is actually a much safer place. Yes, I think that's absolutely right. And, and you know, you can track people if you wish to do so. I don't know whether you yeah. did do that, but you can know exactly where he is at every point. You know, you can be in touch with him uh, by, by text. You know, I used to go out... Um, I, I used to go to school in London on the tube from the age of 11, you know, and um, in fact, I think I was 10 yeah. when I first started going. And, you yeah. know, my, we didn't have any communication at all. I would come oh. home, I'd take my bike out on Hampstead Heath and nobody knew where I was, you know, and they didn't yeah. know, if I didn't come back, they didn't know why. I mean, you know, that was just the, like, the way life was. And I find it amazing that, uh, that with, as you say, all the technology, that, that you would say that it's a more dangerous place. It clearly, it clearly isn't. But, I mean, has this put you off social media i mean do you wish you hadn't put it out there now because i mean you know even um, even oscar's not that happy with you about it is he <laughs> no oscar oscar wishes i hadn't put it out there although he's been actually really sensible about this mm. and he was with me i was driving uh back from switzerland to the uk when it all really kicked off and so i was having a number of conversations in the car on the speakerphone with with journalists and oscar was with me so he's had a lot of input he was the one who signed off on the article on the mail on Sunday. Yeah. You know, this very much has been something I've discussed with him. And um, I'm, I'm obviously part of me thinks I shouldn't have done it because there's been a load of hassle yeah. and Oscar's not best pleased. And the other part of me thinks I'm so pleased I did it because this has illustrated exactly what I had feared and what a lot of people much brighter than me, researchers and... Right you know, experts in their field have been saying for a while right. there is a problem. Mm. People are afraid and that as a result holding their children back and infantilizing them and it isn't good for them. No. But here's the other bit, the crazy bit, which we haven't even got to yet, but in the last couple of minutes let's let's talk about it. The social services get called by some somebody who who is is definitely a busybody. What did they actually say to you when they came round? Luckily they didn't come round. Um, I they rang me. I was busy packing up the house, so I didn't answer the phone. Obviously, I didn't know it was them. Right. And then I sent a reply saying, packing up the house, but I will look at text. And I got a text saying, this is the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, social services. We've had a referral about your son. We'd like to speak to you. So I rang up, and I was quite cross, as you can imagine, because obviously it's a malicious referral. Yeah. You can't be concerned about the welfare of a child who has returned safe and sound. Right. Exactly. If this was someone who knew me, as they're alleging, uh, they would have known that Oscar had gone and they would have rung three weeks ago, or right. four weeks ago, when he first set off. Yeah. So it's obviously a malicious complaint. So what did they say, um, though, to you? They said, uh, I said, have you opened a file on my child? Um, because I was obviously horrified by that concept. And they said, yes. I said, um, what, you know, why are you calling? What is it that you want to know? And they said... We want to know what safeguards were put in place for Oscar's journey. And I I just said, but he's back. Right. And it's the Thursday before the bank holiday weekend of Notting Hill Carnival, yeah. which is an RBKNC event and a very busy time for the borough. And I was frankly shocked that they had the time to ring the parent of a child who was 15, who's now 16, who was safe and well, and... The, the, the suggestion that somehow it's neglectful to let your child go travelling is, as far as yeah. I'm concerned, completely absurd and yeah. a frightening indication of where we're going as a country. Yeah, absolutely. Incredible. Well, an incredible story, Kirsty. Thanks for talking to us. Um, and uh, have, a, have a lovely time for the rest of the summer holidays, whatever uh, whatever you decide to do, either with Oscar or without. Um, that was Kirsty Allsop there, uh, talking about her incredible experience not only with social media, not only with uh, newspapers and, and television and all the rest of it, but with social services calling as well. What a nightmare.